plugin is almost complete. There are just a few things that needs to be done. The next thing on our list is to make a widget. This widget will display a recipe of the day. We'll be using a few we'll be using a few WordPress APIs to make this work. The first API is the widgets API. I provide a link in the resources section of this lecture to the widgets API codex page. WordPress provides some really good examples on how to implement your own widget. We will also have to use some object-oriented programming to create a widget. Don't worry, it's easy. Inside the main plugin file, let's use an action hook called widgets underscore init. This hook is called when widgets are initialized. We will be able to register our widget with this hook. The function to call is r underscore widgets underscore init. We're going to define this function inside a file called widgets.php. Create this file inside the includes folder and include it from your main plugin file. This hook is actually called very early, so to make sure our file is included properly, we have to prepend the plugin directory to our includes string. We can accomplish this by using the dir name function and passing in our plugin URL constant like so. To register a widget, call the register underscore widget function. This function has one required parameter and that's the name of the class that contains our widget. I'm going to pass in our underscore daily underscore recipe underscore widget. This class doesn't exist. Let's create it now. I'm going to create a folder called widgets inside the includes folder. Next, create a file called daily-recipe.php and create a class called r underscore daily underscore recipe underscore widget. Lastly, include this file from the main plugin file. This class has to extend the wp underscore widget class. This class will help integrate our widget with WordPress's system. It'll leave us to take care of the rest by displaying the widget and setting up its fields. If we look at the codex page, there's a default usage section. Let's copy the code inside the class and paste it into ours. Let's go through this one by one. The construct function is where we'll be setting up the widget. There's only one thing we need to do, and that is call the parent constructor method. This method has three parameters. The first parameter is an ID for the widget. Set this to r underscore daily underscore recipe underscore widget. The second parameter is the title of our widget. This will be displayed in the widgets admin page and will help users identify your widget. Let's call this widget recipe of the day. The last parameter is an array of additional arguments we can set. For now, we only want to set the description. The description will be displayed in the widgets admin page. The description should be short and concise. Let's set this to displays a random recipe each day. WordPress will now recognize our widget officially. The next method is called widget. This method takes care of displaying the widget to the front end. I'm going to skip this right now. I promise we'll get back to it later. The third method is form. WordPress will call this method if we have a form that will allow the user to customize this widget. You're past a variable named instance. This contains the form values of the current instance of the widget. Our widget isn't super complex. We only have one field, and that's the title of the widget. First, let's create some default values. Since there's only a title, we'll set the default title to recipe of the day. Next, we're going to set the instance variable to the value returned by the function wp underscore P-A-R-S-E 
underscore args. This is a utility function provided by WordPress. This method will merge two arrays together and return the merged array. If the instance already has a title, then the default won't override that title. Otherwise, the title will be set from the default array. This will guarantee that we have a title set whether this is a new instance or not. Let's start displaying our fields. I'm going to paste in this bit of code. Pause the video if you need to and copy what I have. Let's go over what this code does. We have a label and we set it for attribute to the value returned by the get underscore field underscore ID method. This method will generate an ID for our field. You pass in the name of the field. We actually use this method twice. The second time is for the ID attribute in the input field. The next method is the get underscore field underscore name. Just like the get underscore field underscore ID method, this method will generate a name for our input. You may be thinking, why is this important? Can't we just generate our own names and IDs? The WordPress widget form is submitted with AJAX. WordPress takes care of submitting the data and updating the corresponding fields. So it's recommended to let WordPress take care of generating these attributes for you, which is what these functions do. The last attribute we set is the value. We output the instance's title. We sanitize the value with the ESC underscore ATTR method. This method will make sure the value can be inserted into an attribute without breaking the code. The last method we have is the update method. This method is called when a user submits the form. This allows us to filter the input in our own way. This method is passed in two variables. The first is the new submitted data, and the second is the previous instance data. I'm going to create a new variable called instance. This will contain all our widget settings. We only have one setting, which is the title. So we'll set the title to the new instance's title. We're going to just sanitize the title by stripping any tags from the input. Then you have to return this instance so WordPress can then save our widget's settings. Before we finish, let's go back to our widget method and echo out a simple recipe of the day message. We'll be changing this later. Let's go to the widget admin page and you'll find your widget ready to use. Add this widget to your sidebar and place it at the very top. WordPress takes care of setting up the UI for us and displaying the form. We can actually change the title and it will be updated properly. Let's view our site and you should see our widget being outputted onto the sidebar. The widget method is called to display the widget. Now the question is, how do we display a recipe of the day? We have to take care of picking a random recipe and make it last for a day. Then our widget should refresh the recipe the next day. We can do this a number of ways, like using the Options API. However, there's actually an API meant for this kind of task called the Transients API. Before we use that, we have to set up a cron job. 